Hello friends, in this video I will be talking about the anterior approach to the proximal radius that is Henry's approach. There has been concern among residents that this approach when used for proximal radius structures can have risk of posterior interosseous nerve palsy and the antivascular structures proximally can also limit the exposure of the proximal radius. Therefore the residents opt for posterior approach for the proximal radius and the posterior approach on the other side has extensive dissection of the extensor muscles and the muscular branches rather that can potentially injure the muscles and carry the risk of potential manipulation of posterior interosseous nerve and its branches. So in this video we will be seeing the basic tips which are required for the exposure of proximal radius using anterior approach or Henry approach. So the incision has to be planned according to the extent of the brachioradialis. So the brachioradialis medial extent is limited by the biceps tendon proximally and the radial styloid distally. So the marker for the incision is the biceps tendon proximally and the radial styloid distally. So the incision lies between these anatomical landmarks. So once you start your incision, the first thing you need to do is to prevent any injury to the subcutaneous nerves. The lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm lies in this area just over the brachial radialis. So you have to be careful whenever going through the subcutaneous tissue, you have to protect the nerve endings and whenever they are coming in your exposure plane, you can just pull them and transect them. So to avoid any painful neuroma formation and whenever possible just try to preserve it. The second step is to incise the deep fascia. Once that has been done, you will be able to see the brachioradialis, exact contour of the brachioradialis. It starts from here proximally, lies just lateral to the biceps, tendon insertion and fans in the mid part then tapers distally like this. The whole bulk of the muscles you are seeing here is the mobile wed of Henry and brachioradialis is the prominent muscle of this mobile wed of Henry that lies anteriorly and on the medial side you are seeing the flexor compartment and the lateral most and the lateral most and superficial muscle of the flexor compartment is the flexor carpi radialis so the muscle you are seeing here is the flexor carpi radialis so the plane of your approach is going to be between the brachioradialis and the flexor carpi radialis then you have to retract the brachioradialis laterally so once that has been done you will be able to see the deep fascia is actually separating the deep muscles of the forearm from the mobile bed of Henry and the vena committentes you are seeing here the purple red color small vein is actually marking the track of radial artery so you have to be careful in this area and this fibro fatty tissue you are seeing usually the neurovascular structures are often surrounded by fibro fatty tissue so therefore there are chances of a major vascular or neural structure here now gently dissect this region then you will be able to see what all structures we have here with gentle dissection we were able to isolate the superficial branch of the radial nerve so you see this glistening white structure is the superficial branch of the radial nerve so you have to dissect it clear it and retract it laterally be careful not to disturb the radial artery you are seeing here it is more it is more prominent now after clearing it from the superficial radial nerve the superficial branch of the radial nerve is in close proximity with the radial artery in the proximal third so you have to gently dissect it and detect it laterally so if we have detected the superficial branch of the radial nerve laterally now we are able to clearly see the radial artery so this is the radial artery you need not to separate the radial artery proximally because you have to retract the radial artery medially whenever approaching the proximal third of the radius you need not to isolate it so once you clean this area you will be able to see the tendinous part of the muscle shining here which is nothing but the pronator teres insertion the pronator teres inserts in the middle third of the radius make a small lick in this region then gently cut the deep fascia while protecting the radial artery and once you are doing that you will be able to see the pronator teres clearly so we are cutting the deep fascia here and now you see the pronator teres is clearly visible and its insertion on the radius now what happens pronator tries to pull the bristle fragment medially and tries to pronate it so the distal fragment will lie more medial and anterior compared to its original position while the proximal fragment will be lying somewhere laterally somewhere laterally because of the pull of the supinator muscle so the distal fragment will be lying somewhere here and the proximal fragment will be lying somewhere here because of the pull of the supinator now we have to release the insertion of the pronator teres from the distal fragment to expose it now you are able to see the distal fragment clearly and the proximal fragment will be lying somewhere here you just need to gently feel the bone over here and clean the soft tissue over the bone and once that is done you will be able to see a linear muscle free zone which is actually separating the supinator muscle this these oblique fibers are supinator muscle and these longitudinal fibers are the deep compartment muscles which are originating from the proximal part of the radius so this clear area is the critical part once you have exposed this clear part 
then you'll be able to create a plane for your implant placement so you see this is a supinator muscle this area is actually representing this zone the zone between the supinator muscle and the deep compartment muscles which are originating from the medial side of the proximal radius and you need not to go medial to the biceps tendon this line represents a muscle free zone which you need to mark properly to expose the proximal radius now what you need to do you have to release the supinator muscles subperiosely from this zone and you have to lift it laterally to expose the proximal radius like this we have lifted the supinator muscle proximally and you are able to see the proximal radius clearly so this aspect of the proximal radius is actually the lateral aspect why because of the pull of the pronator muscle which is actually keeping the radius in pronated position so this part is actually lateral and but because of the pronation of the distal fragment it is appearing to be anterior and you can place your implant on the anterior part of the radius which is actually pronated and you need to avoid any large instruments in this zone you can use small instruments like handset instruments just which are just sufficient to expose this much part and once that is done you'll be able to reduce the fracture so this will be the picture you'll be seeing after your fixation so the fracture appears to be reduced and you can just revise all the structures you have isolated the superficial most part is the brachial radialis this is the superficial branch of the radial nerve and these deep muscles you are seeing are actually the extensor compartment muscles which are lying lateral to the radius the radial artery is lying here it is here and we have kept it medial and the radial artery lies medial to the biceps tendon insertion and biceps tendon insertion is on the radial tuberosity which is actually on the medial side of the anterior surface that means you will get enough area for placement of your plate you see you are getting three holes proximally for the plate fixation and once you are done with your reduction then you can just go for a strain free closure you need not to go layer by layer you just need to put few sutures in the subcutaneous spine just sufficient to prevent any muscle herniation and once that is done you can go for the skin closure and avoid using tourniquet whenever excessive dissection is anticipated and if you are using tourniquet it's better to put the drain to avoid any dead space collection that can compromise the wound healing